So I ran the poll about a month ago and I realized about a third of you guys run Windows on a daily basis. So what I figured I'd do is give you guys 25 awesome free and open source applications available today for Windows. A lot of these applications can wind up replacing your big expensive applications like Adobe Photoshop, Premiere, Microsoft Office, and things like that. Now one thing that's actually really great about open source software, it gives us the users the ability to actually see and audit the code for the applications that we're installing on our system. That's one of the many reasons why it's good other than the fact that it's simply free. Not only are these applications free, but in many cases they are better than their proprietary counterparts. Also, I will note that I am going to be going over some honorable mentions periodically throughout the video, so make sure you watch the video all the way through just to make sure you don't miss any of the awesome software we're about to take a look at. And with that said, let's dive on into this list. So the first thing we're going to touch on is web browsers. My number one web browser and overall go-to, whether that be on Windows or Linux, is Firefox. Firefox is wonderful. It's been around forever. It just works. There's themes, extensions, as everything you need in a web browser. But if you're looking for something with a Chromium base, you can go with the Brave browser. Brave offers everything Firefox does, but it has some additional features such as rewards you can earn via a cryptocurrency thing, built-in ad block, and stuff like that. So Brave overall is a great tool to use. And that takes us to uh, development applications. Now, I asked you guys what some of your favorite applications are on Windows that are free and open source. And a lot of you guys said the uh, VS Code by Microsoft. Now, Visual Studio is free and open source, but it does require some dependencies that are not. So I'd recommend VS Codium. This is an awesome application for either text writing, writing markdown code, basically anything with all of the features of VS Code, but in a completely free and open source application. Now, if you are a developer, I do have to give a honorable mention to this application right here, MinGW, the minimalist GNU for Windows. What it is, is a native port of the GNU compiler collection. If you are a developer, this is something you should be checking out. And now we're gonna be getting into the media player category. And the very first one I'm gonna bring up is MPV. It is a great, extremely basic, lightweight media player has scripting, high quality output, has on-screen controller, the basics of a video player. If I go ahead and open it up real quick, you can see this is what you are greeted with. All you need to do to really use this is go ahead and drag and drop your files. So I'll go ahead and grab a video real quick just so you can see what is going on here. It just works good. Now that takes us to VLC. Now VLC is another great media player. Uh, for me, if you're looking for something that just plays videos, it's kind of not really necessary because there's so many different features that have screen recorders, media encoders, you could convert media with it. There's really a lot you could do with VLC. So if you're looking for something that's more uh, fully featured and rich, VLC is a wonderful option. And now that takes me to this application right here, and this is called Make MKV. What this will let you do is rip media off of Blu-rays, DVDs, anything like that that you have laying around your house. I use this quite a bit when I was uh, building my collection for my media server. I ripped a lot of things on this and put it on that media server. So this is definitely a nice little free and open source application that you should definitely grab if you do want to do that. Now with that said, I am going to bring in another honorable mention and that is Handbrake. Handbrake is a wonderful tool for general file conversions for media files. You could take a movie MOV file, turn it into an MP4. General functions like that, I had used that quite a bit when I was recording my videos with my cell phone because the video editor I was using did not like my cell phone's video. Handbrake worked very, very well for that. And from there, we're going to go into the wonderful world of email clients. This is one I've been talking about quite a bit lately. This is Mailspring. The only real con with Mailspring, it's an Electron application, so that's hit or miss depending on who you are. But it is absolutely beautiful when it comes to the general layout. And it has some really cool features that kind of track the emails you send that let, let you know if somebody like opens it and lets you know when, how many times they opened it. If you add a link to your email, you can see if they actually clicked the link. It has some really nice features like that. And if that's something you're interested in, it's definitely worth checking out. But that takes us to Mozilla Thunderbird. This is more of the kind of go-to when it comes to email or the free and open source email clients. It's fully functional. You can see just right here, they have email, calendar, address book. You could chat through it. You could do RSS feeds, news groups. It is a 
fully featured email client application that is absolutely wonderful. So from email clients, we go to image manipulation. And the first thing we're gonna look at is an application called Krita. Now I will note this is a paid application in the Microsoft Store, but you could download the uh, executable file from their website completely free. But what this is, is a painting utility. Now I am not an artist in the slightest, but if you do have like a drawing tablet or any artistic capabilities whatsoever, it is a absolutely wonderful tool. As you can see, my drawing skills are comparable to a second grader, but this isn't like a general Microsoft Paint. You can truly make masterpieces with this. I would highly recommend everybody check it out. And that takes us to GIMP. GIMP is more like the Photoshop replacement. You could do general graphics editing. You can really make or manipulate photos any way you want with GIMP. Now, there is a bit of a learning curve if you're jumping from Photoshop to GIMP, but there's a plugin that you could get that will help with that change called Photo GIMP. It doesn't completely make it into Photoshop, but it will bring in a lot of the uh, fonts. It'll bring in a lot of the uh, kind of hotkeys that you're used to using in Photoshop and make it a lot easier for, the, for you to use. But I used Photoshop for basically six years, and I've only been using this for about a year and I'm having a really good time using it. It took me a bit, but I'm, I'm getting the hang of it. And from there, we have Darktable. Darktable is a little bit different because it's more like a uh, Adobe Lightroom replacement, and it does the job extremely well. It allows you to get like raw images and completely change and edit the uh, colors and the saturation and mess with color curves and all that stuff, just like you would be able to do in Adobe Lightroom. And going from there, we have Vector Graphics. Now, unlike GIMP, vector graphics are awesome if you're like designing logos or you're making things to be printed onto posters, stuff like that. Inkscape is one of the go-to tools for vector graphics. This is it right here. I'm not too familiar with Inkscape. I just know that it's one of the more recommended and well-rounded applications for doing vector graphics. With what I've been told, the tools are extremely easy to use. The text editing is extremely functional. It overall is a wonderful application. But something I have a little bit more experience in is this application right here. This is Pencil Project. Pencil Project is another uh, vector editing application. I've used this in the past to make uh, like presentations or flyers for if I were in a like college classroom and I was going up to present something, I would whip this open and make a quick little vector art just to kind of express better what I'm doing. You have all your shapes over here for everything you want to do and you can just drag and drop things on there make your shapes, you could add text, they have arrows, and basically anything you'd need to present something appropriately. And if you go over here, there's like basic web elements, there's a desktop GUI tools, so text fields, password fields. You could really make a lot with this, and everything's so easy to use, you just drag and drop and like see that little checkbox, and you could edit the text. So you can make a lot of really cool things with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and we're gonna open up an application that I use on the regular. This is Audacity and we're actually gonna open it up through this. This is an Audacity file for the uh, intro and outro of this video. I went ahead and used Audacity to record my voice. It is a fairly base, not basic, there's so many different features. Uh, I do use it for general audio editing. So to edit audio, you just like select a section, you can hit delete to delete it. What I use it for the most is actually normalizing audio because I record from a couple different like microphones and they come in at different levels. So if you use this normalize effect and actually select the audio when you do it, so effect, uh, normalize, and then right here you could hit OK and it will basically balance everything out. So I hit OK, it will render. The audio was already OK, so it didn't really do much. But if you had a lot of high waves and low waves, it would match everything out to make your audio sound really good. Now the next audio application I'm gonna mention, I didn't install on here, it's Ardor. Ardor is a wonderful, you could do so much with Ardor. There's different inputs, it's a full audio editing suite. If you can imagine something, you could do it in Ardor. The only problem with that in Windows is it's kind of a pain to get. You either have to donate to get it or you have to build the source from scratch, which is very doable. I just didn't feel like doing it because I'm not actually going to use it on this machine. But if you are an audio engineer and you want to take the time to use a fantastic piece of software, Ardor is a great go-to. And that brings us to an honorable mention, and that is LMMS. 
That is a free and open source beat making utility that based on what I've been told at least it is a wonderful application. And then that takes us to note taking applications. Now I mentioned this a couple videos ago is Joplin. Joplin is wonderful for both taking notes and actually editing markdown. You can see over here we have a markdown editor and this is how it's displayed right here. So it's really easy to put in images, links, bold things, add images, icons. I said images twice. You get the point. It's great. It's fully featured. You have all your notebooks over here and you could go ahead and synchronize all your notes with uh, Dropbox, Nextcloud, whatever service you actually want to use. If we go over here, you could switch from the dual kind of markdown screen to purely rich text if you don't want to mess around with markdown. You have basic rich text editing functions up here. Joplin overall is a wonderful tool no matter what system you're on. And that takes us to Simple Note. Simple Note is, as the name recalls, a little simpler than Joplin. I'm going to go ahead and log in real quick. Now all these notes I have here are kind of old because I recently, not recently, but I switched over to Joplin. Well, first Boost Note, then Joplin. But this is really good if you're just looking for a simple note-taking utility. You do have to log into an online account to actually get this and sync all your notes with that online account. So if that's something you're not into, okay. But it's cool because it has Android apps, iPhone apps, and all that. All your notes are over here on the side. You just type, you can add tags or search functionality. Simple Note overall is a great tool. And then from there, we have Office applications. What I'm going to bring up is LibreOffice. Now LibreOffice is a full Microsoft Office replacement that you can use. And so over here we have Writer, Cal, Impress. And you can kind of figure out what that is even based on the color scheme of it. So Writer is Word, this is Excel, Impress is PowerPoint, and then you have Draw, Math, and a Database. So that's like the Microsoft Access. And any feature that you'd expect is in here it's not as bad as GIMP, but there is a little bit of a learning curve. You can see it's fairly familiar with the setup. If you're already in Windows, the one good thing about that is you don't need to worry about font compatibility because you already have all the Microsoft fonts. But if you are a user of Microsoft Office on your computer, I do recommend downloading this and trying slowly migrating into this because overall it is a great application. Uh, one thing I'll bring up is if you're looking for something that's not free and open source, but you're looking to switch away from Microsoft with the most compatibility with it, WPS Office is a good option, but being that that's not completely free and open source, that I'm not going to count that in this video. That's just a little mention for if you're not too picky on that subject. Now, with that said, we're going to bring up a PDF application. This is, I'm not even sure if I can say it, Oakler, Oakler. This is by the KDE team, and it's awesome because you can uh, use this to pull in PDF documents. You can edit them, merge them. Anything you'd expect out of a good PDF document application, you can find in this application. Now, the next application I'm going to talk about is OnlyOffice. Now, what this is, you, you could get it for the desktop, but I'm specifically talking about the add-on for Nextcloud. What this will allow you to do is completely replace either the Office Online by Microsoft, Google Docs, or whatever online document editing applications you use. The thing with this is you could actually self-host it, whether that be on physical hardware or on a VPS server somewhere. This will help you get rid of your dependency for Google Docs. And the cool thing is it does have some of the same collaborative functionalities that like Google Docs has. It's something definitely worth checking out if you're into things like that. So with that said, we're going to move into video editors. And the video editor that I use more than any is KDIN Live. It's another one by the KDE team, and it is remarkable. When I was switching over from Windows to Linux, I was a heavy user of Adobe Premiere. I used it for four years all throughout high school and years after that. And the switch from Premiere to KDIN Live was, well, is awesome because it has a lot of the same functionality as far as keyframing, effects, just how everything works is very similar. And for somebody like me who came from Premiere, Caden Live was a really natural switch. There was a couple hotkeys and things that I had to learn and a few little things that were unique to KDE, but it was really easy to pick up. As a matter of fact, this video, as you can see, is edited in Caden Live. Every single little animation, effect, everything that you've seen has been edited through Caden Live. And now that takes us to all of Video Editor. All of Video Editor is a newer video editor. I've used it here and there a little bit. I can tell that as this application progresses and gets better as far as bugs and glitchiness, because it is technically an alpha stage, 
this is probably what I'm going to end up switching to. Because it has a really awesome node editor. The effects work really good. The actual timeline scrubbing and the uh, actual preview window and all that does work a little bit better than in Caden Live. But especially if you're looking for something with a node style editor, this is something to definitely look out for. And now these last couple applications aren't really categorized because there's only going to be one of them per category. And the very first one I'm going to talk about is Bitwarden. Bitwarden is a password manager, completely free and open source. It's awesome as desktop applications. You could have it on your phone, um, on Windows, obviously. Generally, the best use for this is like an extension for Firefox. But Bitwarden is free, open source. You could even host an instance of it yourself. It is wonderful. And then the next application we're going to talk about is actually how I'm recording this video currently, and that is OBS. OBS is completely free and open source. It's available cross-platform, so it works awesome on Linux. It works awesome on Windows. Uh, you probably know it as a streaming tool, so for like gamers to stream. But it is a fantastic screen recording tool. Even if you have no reason to necessarily stream or record your screen, let's say you are a teacher and you're looking to really up your Zoom game. You could really do some cool stuff with this when it comes to having uh, your screen show up with you in it. And that's just one example. There's really a lot of use cases for this that people don't really think about, but this is definitely something you want to check out. It's a wonderful application. I use it every single day. And with that said, 7-Zip. 7-Zip is absolutely wonderful. If you're trying to open up like RAR documents and you don't want that WinRAR friggin' spam bubbler that you have to hit ignore every single time. 7-Zip is wonderful. This application is currently only natively available on Windows, but it's just recently starting to uh, have some development put towards Linux. So this is one of the only applications in the bunch that is uh, Windows specific, at least as far as the uh, graphic utility of it. But th this is fantastic for any type of compression files, extracting files, whether that be actual 7-Zips, zips, WinRAR documents, or anything tar documents that you need to extract. 7-Zip is a beautiful tool to have on your system. And if you don't have it now, you're gonna need to have it eventually. So I would just go ahead and install it. And with all that said, I'm gonna have two honorable mentions to end off this video. And the first one is Qubit Torrent. It's a awesome torrent application that you could go ahead, download, install, and use. And the very last one is Blender. I have to bring up Blender because it's such a magnificent piece of software. I personally don't use it. It's way beyond my skill set. But not only can you make basically movies with it and do awesome 3D animation, there's general video editing functionality in it. So Blender is something that you definitely want to check out if you have the time and skill to actually learn the thing. So I do hope you enjoyed this list. Using these applications on Windows is often the very first step into eventually switching over to Linux completely, because if you can completely change your workflow over to software that runs perfectly fine on Linux, as everything we mentioned in this video does, you eventually will be able to easily switch to Linux. And with that said, I do hope you all have a wonderful day. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss any future content. Comment down below what some of your favorite applications are, especially if there's some that I did not mention in this video. Uh, more applications, the better. So please give this video a like if you liked it. If you absolutely hated it, give it a thumbs down. Um, once again, have a beautiful day and goodbye. Now, not only are these applications completely free, but they are better than their proprietary. 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 Now, not only... It <clears throat>